everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, uh, Leveraging MT to Enable Global Technical Support. My name is Kate Marsh, and I will be your host. In today's webinar, I will explore how machine translation can help you create multilingual content to drive customer experience and build a global competitive advantage. Your STL speaker today is Katie Vashi, Language Technology Evangelist. We expect today's webinar to last about 45 to 50 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. I will now pass over to Kitty to begin today's presentation. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, let me jump right into it, because there are a lot of slides, and we, I would like to get through them. So we live in a time of great change, and it's a time of what many people call digital disruption because of the sheer explosion of information and the ability of customers to understand what they're doing and how you compare against their, your competitors. It has become very, very uh, easy for customers to take control of the whole business relationship with you. And we see today that the global enterprise is increasingly multilingual and that the customer today is also very likely to be global and multilingual. Um, this is a famous quote from the founder of Walmart where he, he says that there's only one boss and he's the customer. And he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down by spending his money out. Um, there are others who are talking about how the experience of the customer today is much more um, defined by the actual process that the customer goes through when they're buying and evaluating services that you may offer. So what exactly is customer experience? Um, and if you look at the elements that make this up, you see that it's the whole process by which your customer evaluates different choices, goes through the process of actually putting a purchase transaction through then goes through the experience of using the product, and if there are problems, the experience with the customer support. And this cycle, this continuous um, interaction with the customer is what we generally refer to when we use the word customer. And it has multiple points of interaction you know, from the website to content that may not be on your site, that may be elsewhere, that a review from another user, um, a review by an expert user, reviews in communities. And now the, the flow of information that define how a customer perceives the company and its product and its services are much more flexible, much more fluid, and much more... Um, dynamic. So when we look at what customer experience is, we see that it's increasingly defined by content that is consumed through the journey. From the time that you evaluate products and you consider products and you have some sort of decision-making criteria to the time that you actually start using the product, have some problems, have it been resolved or not, and those customers that have very good experiences from beginning to end tend to become very good advocates. And this is a goal that most modern corporations have. They want to have customers that are advocates. They want customers that are loyal, and they want customers that have a high level of satisfaction. But it's very easy to slip along the way. So, you know, here's a chart that shows... Um, you know, the customer journey in four phases, you know, from research to purchase to service and support to advocacy. And even if you score at a 90% customer satisfaction level at each one of those steps, over the full journey, you're down to 66%. And, you know, what this shows is that there is very little room for the modern enterprise to be able to not perform at their best and, and, and provide 
the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Because in small amounts of drop off over over the overall journey can result in customer reaching a point where they don't really care if they would ever buy a product from you again. There are many successful business people who talk about customer experience. And they all tend to say very clearly that customer experience is the focus of the whole business and that technology and all the other elements are secondary elements to, to building the overall customer experience. And it's not the other way around. And Steve Jobs is one of the most famous, is his quote. Um, so what are the benefits of improving the customer experience? Um, there's market research done here by Genesis that shows that those companies that provide good customer experience have better customer retention. They have ongoing and improving customer satisfaction. And there's the possibility of increased cross-selling and upselling because once you have a good experience um, with a company, you tend to want to buy more products from them or you tend to want to engage with them more to get more of that experience. And this is sort of a key element that drives a lot of companies in the, in the digital era today. Um, so many people are saying today that delivering good customer experience is the key to building customer loyalty. And um, here's a quote by the CEO of Mercedes-Benz saying that customer experience is the new market. Um, other studies show that that the experience of contact centers, for example, you know, since the focus of this particular webcast is about uh, customer support and customer care, that there's lots of research and evidence that suggests that the customer experience during the customer contact or during a problem resolution phase is a very comp important competitive differentiator. Um, so, when we look at what the modern customer expects, we see that you know it's a very challenging and very demanding situation. Standard pricing. You know, customers today are tech savvy. They may come come and ask questions across phones, across computers, across telephones, and they expect the same kind of ease. Expect same quality of service no matter how they come to where they come from and they expect the information to be accurate and if it's not any one of those things they are very easily able to communicate to other users about their displeasure about their lack of satisfaction and about their problematic experience you know, so which can have a very significant negative impact on the modern enterprise. So if we look at some of the specifics, we see that uh, the modern consumer expects 24-7, 365 access. You know, there are consumers all over the world. And increasingly, the notion of self-service is very widely accepted and is increasingly become mobile, it needs to be mobile responsive in the modern era. So you need to be able to find answers to your information either through the computer or increasingly through the phone now as more and more of the world comes online. Um, the idea of pro solving problems via messaging and social media platforms is becoming greatly preferred because it's a much easier way, it's a much more straightforward way, and some of us have experience with getting technical support through Twitter, for example, where it's much faster than going through the, the phone systems where you're put on hold and where you have to give five pieces of information about who you are and what your question is. And increasingly, customers want this very rapid, very instant kind of problem resolution. And there's very clear evidence from multiple studies across the board that suggests that online knowledge bases 
are always preferred when they're available. Um, and of course, the the customer is global today, and so there are many customers that will not even consider products that don't provide information in their language of choice. So, you know, here's a Gallup poll that suggests that 42% of customers will never look at a product that doesn't provide information in their language. Um, a recent common sense advisory survey pointed out that um, 74 Four percent of customers are more likely to repurchase if their after-sales experience, you know, if they have any small issue or a major issue, especially if they have major, that they're provided support in their language, and this has become a requirement in the market. To be able to provide global support quickly, accurately, and in the language of the customer. So one of the other expectations that customers have today is that they want resolution to be efficient. They want it to be a single interaction. They do not want to have to leave their name and number and wait in long queues trying to figure out when a problem will be resolved, um, which again points to this increasing need for large amounts of content that can serve and process these kinds of expectations and needs. Um, there's lots of evidence that when a customer goes and calls um, a, a company about a problem or product issue that they have, if they're not able to get quick answers to their, to their problems, they're very likely to just drop off the call and just hang up. You know, they're not willing to wait. Um, and more and more, it's very clear that customers expect that not only you provide the right answers and you provide it in all these languages and you provide it, you know, accurately, but you need to do it quickly and that they, they don't want to be sitting around waiting for a tech support or a, an agent to be able to find the answer or to even understand the question. That's the, the, the level of tolerance for the, those kinds of issues has dropped dramatically. Um, so we have today this. This is a very demanding scenario that most global enterprises face, you know, where you have such high levels of expectation, where the stakes are so high, where you have to understand that if the customer's experience through this journey is not entirely satisfactory or, 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 or even extremely positive, that the, the impact of such kinds of customer service scenarios are very, you know, a, a can mount into problem situations that can affect market share, that can affect competitive positioning, and that can affect the overall success of the product. So consistent customer care requires access to complete and centralized knowledge and you know always growing always improving content um, this has become a requirement of, of service in the modern era um, we are also seeing that the, the company the enterprise doesn't control this experience as much as they used to but more and more customers trust other users descriptions, other users shared experiences. So like for example, we see today that hotel reviews on third party sites are very often the element that drives purchase behavior. So when I make a hotel reservation, I will look at, res at experiences of hundreds and hopefully even thousands of customers and then look at which hotels tend to do well, and that's that's how I make my choice. And so they, this notion of customers sharing their experience and providing personal recommendations is becoming very important in the whole customer support experience. Um, so if we look at how customer support has evolved over time, 
you see that you know originally all a company really needed to do was to provide some user documentation. It was relatively static and very structured and predictable content because you really only had to provide some basic guidance on how to use the product, and it was all contained within a map. Um, if it was involved software, then there was a graphical user interface as well, and there could be some uh, online support coming from that. But over time, this has evolved, and you know we have discovered that customer support manuals and documentation cannot capture all the different scenarios that customers might undergo. And uh, there is a need for a much broader, much big, bigger database of customer use scenarios that help a customer through specific and very, you know, very uh, special kinds of things that they're trying to do. You know, and especially in the software era, there's all these different scenarios that happen when you work with a computer that you need to be able to have answers to. And so you have customers generating knowledge bases to enable customers to self service. And then you also have the community of users creating content to help each other to provide information and knowledge and shared content on how to be able to uh, use a product. So the, the nature of this is much more dynamic. It's much less structured and it's much less controlled. Um, this has only grown as you know now you start adding the fact that it could be um, a voice response system that provides the answer um, it could be a social media uh, platform that actually provides support to a customer you know, that is increasingly used to provide technical support for many kinds of products in a way the question does relatively straightforward where the answers are relatively straightforward. And so we're seeing this much more dynamic, much more unstructured, and much more fast-flowing kind of customer support that is needed in today's era. So the, there are organizations that monitor how customer support is about. And, um, you know, there's we have three particular cases that we know very clearly, and this is uh, from some research done by the Center for Service Innovation. And so assisted support where you call the company and the customers talk to the vendor and then they understand the problem and then they provide some sort of response to that is what we are most familiar with historically. But now more and more, Self-service is the preferred model, and now all most techno technology companies and most companies with online web presence-based services need to provide self-service te technical support, uh, self-service for any kind of uh, support requirement, and the, the, the preferred ratio that, that I that many state is that if we should service eighty five percent of our customers through self service content. So you provide lots of different information, you provide an easy way to search for that information, and that information then services the the customer. Um, but what we've also realized is that there are many scenarios where the company cannot envision all the different use scenarios and other users share their particular experience with the product, and that ex shared experience becomes much more useful than even the self-service stuff. And it is a sort of an ev evolved form of the self-service, but it's it's beyond the control of the company. And so, you know, it's it's, uh, it's information that you find in online forums, information in best practices in blogs and wiki wikis, and other kinds of shared support that um, that is that is common in the on the internet today and what we see is that the demand for support is huge um, so again data from the consortium for service innovation shows that for every call made to a support center you know to a corporate and an enterprise support center 
where development and engineering and product management may be involved in responding to the question, there are 10 times as many, or maybe 20 or 30 times as many self-service requ requests made in, in that same instance. And if you look further that for, at the community at large, there will be 30 times as many. So the, the, the volume of support interactions now are increasingly self-service, are increasingly going to be generated from content that may not be generated, that may not be created by the company. So, but the company does need to monitor all this content and make it available to all parties if, if needed be. You know, so for example, if a, a group of users in China really understand how to do something with the product, it is useful for the company to translate that content and make it available to five other languages so users across the globe and also benefit from the knowledge and the expertise of the Chinese people. And so this is why machine translation has become such a critical element in the customer support scenario today. This machine translation enables both internal content, which is growing and exploding, as well as the huge volumes of external content become rapidly multilingual. And in so doing, you generate um, a much more positive customer experience for the customer in all phases of the journey. So all the way from pre-purchase when they're evaluating information, um, what TV should I buy? You know, does UHD matter or does 4K matter? And what kind of controls do I really need? So all the information that you that you need to understand those choices, you know, need to be made available. You know, there it is possible to go to a store. It is possible to go and talk to customers. But increasingly, there's data that suggests that more and more customers try to gather their information through online content, through online sources, before they before they may actually ever step into a store. They may only step into the store to go and get the visceral feel of the product and just to see in you know to touch it. But most of the evaluation and purchase decision making process is happening with content through the whole process. Um, um, uh, you know, across the, this whole spectrum. So information and content across this whole range of, of uh, the customer's journey is a critical requirement for the, for the moment. So when we look at how machine translation can be used in the customer service and customer support arena, we see there are three different places that, you know, where machine translation can enable a large amount of content on most things. The most obvious, of course, is the self-service knowledge-based data database, where customers come to a large body of answers, essentially, and they have certain questions, they type the question in, they get you know, one or more answers back you know, to, to that question. So this Self-service ability is something that enables every customer to have constant access, 24-7, 365 access. And most global customers expect a global brand to have this kind of capability. And there's you know, very clear evidence that those companies that don't have it tend to become marginalized, tend to fall by the wayside and become less and less relevant. Um, and generally, the, the more complete your knowledge base, the more answers you will have for a large body of your customers. And so there should really only be a very small portion that needs to go to an actual live agent. Um, there's, you know, there's nuance has made a study that says 67% of customers prefer self-service over speaking to anyone. I mean, you and I all know how the preferred way of interaction with um, any customer service issue is I need to be able to find the information quickly and I need to be able to resolve the problem with as minimal interaction with people as possible because 
it's just about to do it like this. So we have seen that as more and more information becomes available, that when you search for information, like you know, we have seen now scenarios where customers search on a question of a problem they may have, and then they find that there could be 20 or 30 different documents that might answer the question. And so now they have to wade through 20 or 30 documents to be able to get the answer to the question. And so there is now an increasing use of um, interactive um, models of information exchange you know, in the customer support. So it's almost like talking to a human being, but it's a chatbot. And it, it helps refine the question. It helps you pinpoint what you're looking for, and then serves it serves you the right content. So instead of ha you having to read through 20 or 30 different documents to get your answer, it it reduces that need to maybe only one or two. And it's a it's a growing model for how to provide customer support in the most effective and efficient way. Um, Gartner believes that by 2020, chatbots will power. 85% of all customer service in fact, you know, through the whole customer journey. Um, and there's evidence that if the information is properly structured and properly organized, that customer engagements are very satisfactorily handled by this. And of course, for those kinds of issues that cannot be solved by self-service content or by a chatbot, there's always the need for a live agent because it's the last resort in issue resolution and increasingly what we're seeing now is that this live agent is now talking to a global customer base. So while the agent may only speak a single language, the customers that he has to service, she has to service, are customers that may be speaking another language. And so they need to be able to interact with these customers through that. And so MT is a way to leverage, you know, the, the the content that you have and make it multi multilingual. So let's take a, a closer look at just the self service knowledge base and what is typically involved in the implementation of machine translation for that particular use case. Um, and you see that in building um, a multilingual self service knowledge base. You need to have the right kind of content. You have to have the ability to search it. And it needs to be current and always active and up to date. So typically, the process involves taking some content and building customized translation engines. This engine is tuned to the specific terminology of the customer's product and use scenarios, and there's an evolutionary process where machine translation engine continues to improve time. Um, there may be a period where the quality is not ready to, to deliver to a customer, and so there's a refinement process, and you need some expertise on how to do this. Um, the, so the basic process requires that you build a customized engine with available translation memory. You understand the qualities and the characteristics of the corpus of knowledge that you're dealing with, and you tune these systems to the most important terms and terminology that exist in this. Um, to improve the quality of the translations, of the machine translations, it may be necessary to generate new um, translation just to build up the learning of the computer system. Um, and generally, the process involves a refinement and ongoing improvement and evolutionary process. When you monitor usage, you see what when things are very actively used, you pay attention to to that content and make sure that it's translated more accurately so that you service more customers effectively. And at SDL, we have a range of different options available to work with customers to enable them to, to build these self-service knowledge bases and make them 
They can range from customer managed rapid customization process where you just add your specific terminology to experts building the engine for you by doing specific focus analysis, doing very special things to ensure that the coverage of the machine transmission meets certain you know, usability thresholds. And when needed, you may also just have expert linguistic services that go in and take a, a 2 million or a 5 million word knowledge base and identify high frequency linguistic patterns and make sure that those are properly translated to ensure the best performance. And generally, the impact of this is that you produce machine translation that for your very specific subject tends to outperform any general machine translation solution that you'll find. So it, it works better for your content. And you know, this is the objective of most customization projects focused on, on something like a knowledge-based project. Um, in terms of what is needed to address and build multilingual chatbots, as we mentioned, chatbots are a better way to deliver specific and relevant information to the customer in a conversational style. But to do this, you need to have a foundation of structured content. And again, SEL has confidence in building and structuring this content. It has to be richly metadata so that when a customer asks questions around a specific area, the system and the content is intelligent enough to know that this content is relevant to this question. Um, more and more, artificial intelligence is being deployed in these kinds of implementations so that you have natural language generation, natural language practicing capabilities to ensure that you deliver the right kinds of information. And again, you know, once you have the chatbot working in a single language in a way, in a way responding to the questions with meaningful answers and accurate answers, then it can be become multilingual using machine. And finally, the scenario where you have end users who ask, um, have problems that are complicated enough that they need to talk to a life. And they very likely are going to ask the question in their own language. And very likely that the live agents may be monolingual or may only speak a single language. And so you have the scenario where both um, the, uh, where the, the customer and the live agent need to be able to speak to each other across different languages all at the same time because a single live agent can't support multiple chats concurrently. And best practices in this area tend to focus on developing canned answers for the most frequently asked questions. And then using dynamic MT for, for the less frequently asked questions or for more obscure content. And again, this enables a, a monolingual agent to be, become multilingual. Um, SDL has integrations into Salesforce Live, Live Agent and so that we already have implementations directly connected into a number of widely used um, support capabilities. And, and again, the benefit of this is to, by being able to respond to your customer in their language, you tend to have a chance to produce a better uh, outcome. So as we've looked at these different scenarios, we see that MT enables the enterprise to generate better customer experience and enhance the support and care. Um, there is a, a well-respected um, study done by the Index Alliance and the Index Consulting Company. It talks about how there are three pillars to digital transformation and building digital leadership in the modern world. You know, that involves product innovation, customer intimacy, and operational efficiency. And if we look more closely at this, we see that in each case, um, you know, the ability to have machine translation underlie the process 
improves the level and the extent and the, uh, the volume of information exchange that happens across the country. So, um, you know, it's very clear with customer intimacy that a global customer, you know, customers across the world can get more information by using machine translation. But even in the product in innovation process, you find that the, in the product development procedures, you know, that maybe there's products are built in China, maybe they're designed in Europe, maybe they're marketed mostly in the U.S., that these teams need to communicate much more interactively and the sheer volume of these communications require ongoing instant rapid translation that facilitates and greases these kinds of communications. Um, if you look at just cost savings, you see that indirect support costs, so that's self-service support is going to be is going to cost cost much less than using a live agent. You know, it's, it's well known that as soon as the live agent is involved and as calls escalate, the cost of the call, the cost of the support increases dramatically. So, you know, this is a chart that shows you very clearly that it's possible to support hundreds of thousands of users with self-service support for a small fraction of what it costs to do that via direct support. Um, multilingual self-service content also improves the perception of global brand because if you have information always available across many different languages, you are going to have a larger customer base, you're going to have a happier customer base. Um, Support is one of those things that, you know, a, a bad support experience is very uh, instrumental in building strong positive or strong negative um, customer reactions. So it's very important to be able to, to make this content available. Foster problem resolution is also um, very valuable and it, it will increase international customer loyalty, if a customer knows that I can get support in my language without having to call America, you know, and without having to have contact, um, you know, shipped to me from somewhere else. Um, so what we see today that support is really a network of collaboration. It, it's a, that connects people <coughs> with content excuse me, and connects people with people. So you want to know what other users across the world may also think about the same products. And so this, this sharing of knowledge and sharing of information has become what defines the overall customer experience for many. And connecting people to the right content as new problems emerge, you know, operating systems change, um, new products emerge, new technologies come into the market. This ability to respond and be um, agile and able to uh, interact with all these new needs is also a very important requirement of, of, of the modern era. Um, and always, the customer success is the primary goal. The whole point of having any kind of support organization, any kind of support content, and any kind of network of information sharing is to enable the customer to be successful. And there is no question that in the modern era, it needs to be multilingual. This is why you see some of the largest companies in the world today are very focused on machine translation because they understand that in the in today's world, in the digital disruption that we see so frequently nowadays, that things need to be multilingual. They need to be multilingual instantly. So we see that the principles of great customer experience are the same as great content marketing. You know, so we're trying to understand the needs. We're trying to create content that um, is relevant and we are continuing to listen and adjusting and adapting based on what um, we're hearing customers say. So you want co content that focuses on the needs, which is just 
providing corporate agenda without you know and trying to sell you new things without servicing the old old um, need. You want content that's easy to experience and understand, and even entertaining. You know, this has become a requirement in the modern age. And content that people will want to share, because when you have high-value content, people will share it. And this is the the final outcome of this is that you build customer loyalty, and it provides customers with quick answers, and empowerment, and satisfaction. And loyal customers are going to buy again. And loyal customers are also going to provide convincing recommendations. If you have read reviews of, of certain products on Amazon or on hotel reviews, <coughs> you will see that when you see a sincere endorsement by a customer who, who used it, it has a ring of authenticity to it. It has a ring of truth, and it convinces other customers to follow. The so communication with the community is key, and this community is increasingly global and multilingual. So great global customer care builds customer satisfaction. It improves global brand image. It enhances the ability of the enterprise to build loyalty and retention and it will invariably build competitive advantage. Companies that do this well are going to be the winners of the future. And we see an example of a company that came from nowhere and has displaced many in the retail industry. And the CEO describes his view of the world quite clearly, saying that we're not competitor obsessed, we're customer obsessed. We start with what the customer needs and we work backwards. And this is what I think you will see is the mark of a lot of great, uh, you know, successful companies in in this digit in the digital world. SDL provides machine translation solutions that give the global enterprise control, gives them control over quality, privacy and integration into their key requirements. So quality means you need to be able to optimize your engine, the, the MT capabilities to your very specific language, to the very specific content that you want to make more. Um, but this needs to be private because these are going to be all the conversations you're having with your customers. If they're, There'll be conversations where they're very happy with you, and there'll be conversations where they are not going to be happy with you. It is important that these conversations remain within the confines of the enterprise and remain private and secure. And for any of this to work and really boost the business, it has to be embedded into your overall business processes. You know, so it has to facilitate communication again. It has to enable collaboration. It has to improve customer service support. It has to make language less of a factor in any of your uh, need requirements. So um, STL's enterprise machine translation capabilities provide solutions that help you address the emerging and extremely important requirements of the modern customers era. I think that's all I have in terms of slides, um, and I don't know if there are any questions. As I say, yeah, we can um, move on to our Q&A now. Katie, thank you so much for presenting. I think that's some really valuable information. So um, we have had a couple of questions in, um, but firstly, I would just encourage anyone to ask away now any, any questions you may have for Katie. So um, just while new questions keep on coming in, I'll address the ones that we have. So Katie, straight back to you. Um, the question we've got first is, how can the customer service agent ensure MT is correct during a live multilingual chat? Um, the, the benefit of uh, an agent looking at um, as a live chat is that they can ask clarifying questions. So when a customer 
uh, some student with a question and say the question is uh, submitted in Japanese. And, you know, it's translated by machine translation as something and the customer and the, the live agent looks at the, the response, uh, you know, looks at the translation and then might feel that, okay, I, I'm not sure what he's asking. Let me ask further clarifying questions. And so the, the, in the live interactive machine translation, you know, multilingual chat setting, it is possible to clarify and get to a point of this is exactly what you're asking. And so once the agent knows exactly what the right question is and what the real issue for the customer is, it is possible for, for them to take canned answers, you know, where you know that these are the kinds of questions that customers are going to be asking, and they, they can submit, sometimes it could be human translated responses back to the, to the customer. So this ability to clarify and pinpoint and um, make more specific and relevant is a valuable element of the multilingual chat process. Perfect. Thank you, Katie. Um, so the second question that, that has come in, I know you touched on this a little bit towards the end of the presentation, but um, the question is asking, why is SCL or SCL's MT solution different from the do-it-yourself option? So maybe you could um, go over that in a little more detail. Yeah, the, the, there is a notion in the world today that because there are so many open source toolkits available, that all that is needed to be successful with machine translation is to put some data into one of these open source toolkits, and and you know and build um, a multilingual convert a knowledge base into multiple languages. But what most people find out when they do this is that the sheer complexity of the process is something that they have not. Um, prepared for. The, while it is relatively straightforward to add some data and build some kind of an engine, when you have issues, when you have problems in the output, when you see that it's not translating quite w the way you want it to, you need to have deep expertise to be able to resolve those kinds of problems. The SDL machine translation team has built tens of thousands of engines across hundreds of language combinations over many years, you know, in many different use scenarios, and so have deep expertise on what can and cannot work, and when they see certain kinds of problems, they have a very specific response plan to how to resol resolve those kinds of problems. And these, this kind of knowledge can only come, you know, first from lots of experience, and you know, when I say experience, I mean you literally do need to build thousands of empty systems before you can have a sense for that. Okay, I, there was not enough data in that experiment. There was a English to Spanish empty system, but we had very little data. It was very kind of messy data, and it didn't work. But in this scenario, where the customer's subject domain was very clearly defined same volume of data work you know so I mean you have to really go through hundreds of different experiences before you can get that level of knowledge um, the people at SDL were involved in the early days of the development of statistical machine translation they have their own neural machine translation capabilities they are innovating at a level that Microsoft and Google are it's it, that deep expertise is not something that you can just walk up to, uh, you know, an open source toolkit and expect to have, you know, the same level of experience and confidence. So it's a, uh, you know, the more complicated your problem, the the more specific your need, the deeper the expertise requirement, and the the more valuable it is to have someone who's done it thousands of times. 
Lovely, thank you, Katie. And I think our next question actually sort of leads into um, what we what you were saying at the end. There, um, the question is: Does SCL offer consulting services consulting services to assess my company's specific MT needs? Obviously, people have a wide range of um, of needs, and different companies are complex. So maybe you could talk us through there if that's something that SCL can offer. Yeah, um, SCL has, as I said very broad and very deep experience in how machine translation can work. And also over the years, we've seen many places where it has not worked. So we also understand where it doesn't make sense to try and use machine translation. You know, when, you're, when your quality expectations are very, very high, when there's no real training data available, when there's a lot of unanswered uh, key parameters around a solution or, or around a potential solution development. We know that the odds of success are lower. So yes, we offer consulting services and you know this is specifically exactly the kind of thing we would cover in, in such a process where we would say that yes, these are places where MT could work, it would be very valuable and it would probably improve your customer satisfaction. And here's one where we don't think at this point that you may want to try it because there's not use, there are key elements of success are missing. You know, what the, ex, the consulting services provide is insight, and insight into what the, the best outcomes are like. Lovely, thank you, Katie. Um, the next question that's come in uh, says, what kind of MT translation should be used for the scenarios that you presented today? Statistical MT, adaptive MT, or neural MT? Um, the, the, the kind of technology that you use is really a secondary element. You know, there is lots of evidence that neural machine translation is providing the best output. So when you have the right kind of data, so you need very high quality, very clean, very focused data, if you have that kind of data, then it is possible to use neural machine translation. In situations where that you don't have this kind of data and or you have very noisy, very messy data, it may be better to use statistical machine translation. Um, Adaptive MT is useful when you have ongoing feedback to the machine, you know, to the machine translation engine, when there's constant corrective feedback going back, and which improves and drives the quality of the uh, MT system higher. So typically, that tends to happen in localization scenarios, in a customer support scenario, in any of the scenarios we've discussed here. Maybe in the early phases you could have an adaptive engine, and then, you know, once you've got to a certain threshold, you know, you deploy it, and it's not really interacting in that mode anymore. But the the quality, the, the the technology you use is always going to be defined by the use case and by the kind of data availability that you have and the expectations of the output in the you know in the use tonight so it's I, there is no one you know an answer that says neural machine translation is always better though there's lots of evidence pointing in that direction saying that neural machine translation looks like it's going to handle more and more scenarios and will become the dominant thing but we're still at a point in time where statistical engines can sometimes provide very adequate and very useful very helpful solution. Perfect. Thank you for answering that one, Katie. And I think uh, we have answered all the questions that have come in from the audience. So we can now wrap up today's webinar. So just to say thank you for everyone for attending today. And we hope you found the session useful and informative. And of course, we'll share the recording on demand with you very shortly. And we look forward to seeing you at one of our future webinars. Have a great rest of the day. And thank you again.